You are listening now to A Word of Faith with Bishop Macedo. Thanks be to God, may the Spirit of the Most High, the Holy Spirit, may light up our understanding, your understanding, our understanding, my understanding, so that we may understand His will, His word for our life. Jesus once said, He who has ears to hear, hear what the Spirit says to the church. So, I want the Holy Spirit, through the name of Jesus, may speak or say what we need to hear, because just as I and you Ah, with your ears open to hear his voice. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And the Apostle James, the Apostle James, he directed by the Holy Spirit, he prophesied saying, Has God, has God not chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom which he has promised to those who love him? So, God, He chose the poor of this world, the poor, the people that has nothing, people that live in misery, that many times they are even in need of the most things. So, God chose the poor of this world, excluding no one. He chose the poor. So that these poor be rich in faith. Rich in faith. Of course, rich in faith. Rich also in riches of God's words, God's promises. When a person has the richness of faith within them, they transform even the stones into bread because they have the power of the word that brings life, that makes to happen the things that are not happening. You know, when this person is rich by the things of God, they say, they say to the one who has they say to the one that has no ear to hear. How come? Let me, like for example, Jesus spoke to the fig, but the fig has no ears. But the fig heard the word, and it happened that it dried up. Jesus said, Jesus spoke to Lazarus, who was dead inside of the tomb for four days. Four days he was dead. And he said, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus had ears, but he was dead. But he heard the word of Jesus, and he came back to life. Joshua, he, he made the sun and moon to stop. When he said, stop sun and stop the moon, Moses, he stretched out his staff. He stretched out his staff, and the waters of the Red Sea opened up. 
So we understand that when the person is rich in faith that God gives us, that the Holy Spirit gives us, which is the spirit of faith, so then they have the power of the word to make happen what is not happening now. And I want you to understand, my dear listener, because when we talk about poor and rich, the poor, the poor, they think that because they are poor, because they are poor, that this is a sign, a sign of God displeased with them. And then to those people that, those people that are rich, that because they are rich, they say that it's the sign of God, or is a God sign in favor of them. And it has nothing to do with that, not because the person is rich, that they were favored by God, that they were blessed by God. No. How many thieves out there how many people that sell drugs, for instance, and they are rich? How many politicians or people that are working and they are dishonest and they are rich? So the poor is not poor because they are under curse. No, this has nothing to do with that. Because you can notice that Jesus, he, Jesus, never ever rejected not even the rich or the poor nor the rich or the poor but this idea that the rich was favored by God and the poor the poor is cursed they, it came from the time of the Jews they believed like that and it's not true the point is this Abraham was rich Isaac was rich, Jacob was rich, Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus in God's time, Jesus' time, he was rich, Lazarus, he was poor, he was poor and so many others that followed Jesus, they were poor, but they had faith, they had faith to move mountains. So Jesus, he, he was the same to the poor and the rich. And this word here that James makes to the poor and those who are oppressed, it's because these, they did not have, they did not have on what to rely on because they don't have physical beings or material properties. So the poor, they are easily turned to God than becoming rich in faith. Sometimes a person is very rich and God allows that the devil make them to lose everything, to become poor. So that this person that once was rich and now is poor, they may get to know the power of God, that they may know the power of faith, and by faith, rebuild much more and greater their life. So, my dear listener, it is important that those that are favored, in most cases, they end up becoming poor in faith simply because they become rich and then they trust in their riches. The, the rich, they tend to lean on their riches. That's why it says that it is hard for a rich to enter the kingdom of heaven because the rich, they have a headache or they have any kind of any any kind of problem or depression. And the, the rich, they don't think of the church to make a chain of prayer or seeking Jesus, although depression is a spiritual problem. But they don't, they don't lean 
on the spiritual things, but they go to the doctors. And how many, how many doctors also suffer with, with depression? Because they also suffer with the same problem. So the rich has money and they think, no, my money will be able to bring solution to my depression. They think that they, by receiving a counsel from a doctor, they will be able to overcome their physical problem. So it is hard for them to let go of their riches, to trust their riches and trust in God. The poor, on the other hand, they have this advantage. They are easily turned to believe in God because he has no resource. He has nothing to lean on. And the point is this. Many people that they are favored financially speaking, they tend to trust in their riches. And then, naturally, it becomes an obstacle to their salvation. Like the case of the young rich ruler. The young rich ruler, he was rich. He was young and he was rich. A lot of money ahead of him and Jesus wanting, wanting for him to follow, to be his disciple, told him, give to the poor what you have and follow me. But he didn't see in Jesus a greater rich or richness. He saw in Jesus, just as a, as a normal man, a noble man, just like many people, they look at us, they think that we are simple because we just preach the word of God, the word of faith, and we take faith to people. We have been bringing to people the richness that God has given us. Before I die, oh, Jesus returns, and I hope he does return and wrap rapture the church, I will be working and fighting to divide or to share, matter of fact, everything that I have been receiving, I have been sharing. I have been sharing with people what God has given me. Because just as one day, just as one day, someone shared their richness from God, the richness of their faith in God to me, and this richness of God came to me, today we conquered and we have had success and we are succeeding, is what we want to see happening with you, is what we want to see happening in your life. We are passing on to you on a daily basis, on a daily basis from Monday to Monday, Monday to Monday. Instead of spending our money, our richness that he says that we have to enjoy this world, from Monday to Monday, we are sharing our richness, our true richness with you. The, that richness that brings you life, that generate riches physically in your life. So we seek to share with you, to you who is poor, and to you who believe, those that are humble in spirit, those that say, Bishop, please help me, give me a, give me a tip, give me a word, give me an advice on what I can do. So by faith, on God's promises, in faith, on what God has given me, we have been passing on to people all the knowledge, all the knowledge that He has given to us. And I will, I'll go even further. Whenever I make meetings with the pastors, the pastors' meeting, I always tell them, you have the obligation to do better and greater than I have done. And why? Because I, for me to reach where I am, I had to fight. I suffered a lot. I went through many deserts. What I went through, many people have not even the understanding. They don't even have the understanding. So I had sad, sad experiences because of the deserts of life. It's in the deserts 
that we learn more. The Holy Spirit is a master when we are in the desert. Because there he has a disciple that has all his, all his ears open. And it's in the desert that brings us scorpions, snakes, all kinds of animals, wild animals, all kinds of animals that are violent, predators, we find in the, in the desert. We find in the desert. And God has delivered us from all the battles that we came across. And we also have learned along the way. We have learned to live through the difficulties and by faith we have survived. So I have been passing this to the pastors. So they do not need, in theory, I would say, to pass through what I went because I'm passing on to them. I'm already giving it to them. So the obligation is for them to do much greater than what I did. So the past in the Universal Church of the Kingdom of God has the obligation to do better than what we have done. Because I don't keep no letter. I don't keep nothing under my sleeve. I don't keep nothing, nothing hidden. Everything that I receive from the Holy Spirit, I pass. But who is wise, who is intelligent, will apply what I'm passing on to them, they shall be blessed. And those who don't take advantage to hear, what can I do? So I'm passing on what I received from one bishop of my first church. I have been passing on to all. And what I have been receiving much, much more than from my bishop in the beginning, which is much more. Because for 50, more than 50 years following Jesus, he has revealed to me many things and it has been serving to help us remain. So we are passing on to people. So those people that are wise, they take this spirit and they are blessed. We are enriching many. We are enriching many. And many remain poor because they are not willing to give, not willing to sacrifice, not willing to get involved in faith. Because the secret of faith, we have spoken about this, and we will continue to talk about it. The greatest secret of faith is obedience. And obedience is sacrifice, because when you obey, you must sacrifice. For you to obey, you need to sacrifice. And to obey, you have to obey the superior. And superior is God. And for you to do God's will, you must deny your own desires. So you must give. You must make the sacrifice. You must make yourself available in order for him to be able to do his will in your life. You must be able to do like, like a vase, like a, a clay. You know the clay? Clay in the hands of the potter so that he can mold, so that he can mold your life, mold the way he wants. So faith, my dear listener, requires us to take action. You know that one of the great, the great men, the greatest men, Thomas Edison, the scientist who created the light and telephone, he said once, there is no vision, there is no vision if there is action, if there is no action. So there is no vision without action, because vision without action is an illusion. Meaning, if you have eyes and you can see, it's not worth unless you act. So you must move, you must go forward, you have to, you have to do what you need to do, nobody else. So, it's a, it's a matter of action. God gave me faith as he gave to you faith as well. So, what must you do? You must act this faith. I have been acting my faith. I have been seeking to do according to my faith, to my conviction, the certainty within me. And because of this, he 
has been honoring my faith. So, my dear listener, is, it, is, the, is this hard? No. But if if requires obedience, then you must obey and to obey is to give. To pray is to ask. And I have been willing to pray because I, I give. So we are going to be praying. I can pray. I can give. Not only word, but also we pray for you. But there are people that truly they is funny. They don't want not even to pray. They just want to ask for prayer. They have faith to ask somebody to do. Somebody to do. But they don't ask for themselves. Well, if you do that, no problem. I can pray for you. We can pray. But you are manifesting a faith that is dull. A faith that has no result because you are depending on the bishop or pastor to pray for you. But when yourself, you can pray and you can ask what you want from God. Thanks be to God. Faith and intelligence go together. Although faith sounds crazy to this world, it's intelligent because it makes us know that we can be happy. Faith also keeps us from accepting a life of defeat and allows us to fight to conquer a life of victory and success. If nothing is going according to plan, it's time for you to use your intelligence and faith to bring to existence the desires of your heart. The Universal Church, a place of faith to change your life. I started to get involved with games. It was filled with so much hate and resentment, completely destroyed. I was really angry. I was always frustrated. I was just so mean. I had no money, I had no job. Like, I didn't want to live no more. So it was all or nothing. My life before, I was an addict. Um, I got in a relationship really young, 15 years old. Um, I thought it was a better choice at the time. The relationship that I was in, I kind of just like, was filled with so much hate and resentment. I pushed uh, my family away. That's what caused a depression. I started to get involved in stronger drugs. Um, I started to get involved with a lot of people that sold drugs. I seen that it was an easy way to make money. So I left school. I left the job that I had, and I went after the, the easy money. I was selling drugs. It was so much easier. That I started using more, more drugs. Um, as more the more that I would sell, I would go to different states. I would go to different um, towns, and it wasn't just a little bit, it was a, a lot. I would leave my children with my grandmother because I was afraid to take them with me because of the type of environment that I would be in. You know, I didn't want them to, to get taken away. And it came a point in time when I got another relationship. Um, that's when it was kind of like my very rock bottom. Um, there was no money. Now I couldn't even get, sell the drugs because I didn't even have the drugs. I was so consuming so much. You know, my daughter, she was, she came knocking on the door one time and I was completely like so high and I was just angry, you know, and she interrupted me and I remember opening the door so angry and I was just like, you know, what do you want? And I remember she looked at me and I will never forget. From that moment, she just like, you know, mom, you're always stuck in the room. You know, you don't care about us. And, and it kind of it hurt me so much because I was helpless. And my husband, um, he had fell out a couple times. Um, unconscious and I didn't know what was going on I didn't know what was wrong so I kind of like panicked and I called my cousin I was like I don't know what's going on but and I started thinking of all these things like what's gonna happen with my kids what's gonna happen with me you know what if he's dead and he would come back to like conscience and he wouldn't remember he started to manifest he'd become really angry he'd become really abusive really aggressive he's never done that before so I was kind of in fear, like, what's going on? I would literally not want to stay in the household. I would stay in a motel because I was so afraid of what was going to happen. Then my aunt, she mentioned about, you know, well, there's, I've heard some, you know, things about this church that I used to go to, you know, but all I knew was I needed help. I needed help. So I went with her. Like, I have peace. I'm not angry anymore. I have a positive attitude. Um, I'm drug-free, like I no longer suffer with an addiction. Things that I 
would start and never complete, I'm able to start and complete now. To like go to school, go back to school. I started it, I never finished it. And here I am now going back to school and I'm going to complete it. I'm a very involved parent. And they look at me and they, they see something different. My daughter mentioned the other day, why are you going back to school? Why are you doing these things? You know, before you didn't even take time to sit there and speak with us. And, and she just went up to give me a hug. So when you're serving God, you're gonna serve Him with all of your strength. And you're gonna see that He's gonna come and He's gonna change like everything. And I see that God, He's with me in everything that I do. My name is Betty Martin. I'm a member of the Universal Church in Baltimore, Maryland. I've been attending the church for four months now. Before I started attending the Universal Church, I was smoking cigarettes, smoking marijuana. I uh, was taking pain pills, any kind of pain pills I could pretty much get my hands on. Um, I, I was taking them. My life was spiraling downhill. It all started I'ma say like around the age of 26, 27, um, I had a really bad heartbreak. I had just had my son and me and my children's dad was going through a terrible breakup and the only way for him to see my child was if I agreed to you know, be with him. 
and uh, I just stopped talking to him all the way around the board and I started like indulging in a lot of painkillers, marijuana, cigarettes. Um, it was really hard for me. I, I really felt like I didn't want to be on, you know, the planet anymore, I'm going to say. I wanted to die. And I felt like the only way out would be to die and that way he could take care of his son. One day I was uh, actually sitting on the steps and I was like really in a, you know, Wrong. You know, I was really in like a really bad mood. Things just wasn't turning out for me. And someone was like walking down the street, a guy, uh, one of my neighbors was walking down the street. And he said to me, like, why don't you come to church with me? He said it to me, I'm going to say a good three to four times before I actually went. Um, around like the fourth time of him telling me to come to church, I actually got up off that step and I came. And ever since that day, I've been attending the Universal Church. Um, it started off as something small. Like I came and, you know, I was praying for, um, I got the um, holy water and I was praying for me to stop smoking. And it was, it was, it was kind of hard. I went home one day and I was in tears. And everybody in my house smoked. So it's, it's hard to stop smoking when you're always around it. You know, I had been praying. Asking God, like, please help me to stop smoking. Please help me to stop smoking. And when I came home, everybody was smoking, and I was like, I wanted a cigarette, but my mouth wouldn't allow me to ask for it. So I turned around, and I left out of my own house. Yes, I did. Walked out of the house, walked down the street, so I'm like, I'm going to get some gum. I have to get something to stop this urge because I really wanted a cigarette, but I knew it was no good for me. And as I was walking down the street, um the assistant pastor was standing outside standing in front of the church he said to me betty where are you going i said i'm on my way to the store because i i want a cigarette and i'm crying. he said well what are you crying for i said well i well i haven't smoked a cigarette today he said so are you crying because you want a cigarette or are you crying because you don't want a cigarette and i was like well a little bit of both and i asked him could he pray for me and he prayed over me and from that day forward I haven't smoked a cigarette, marijuana, I haven't done a drug, not one time. Yeah. Give me, my Lord, a heart that's true to you. Your will be done. And I won't turn away My soul is lost in sorrow Forgive me now I pray Give me, my Lord, a heart that's true to you My Lord, I long to hear your speaking voice Telling me don't be for I am here To feel your arms around me To feel your love for me Give me, my Lord, a heart that's true to you Father, renew me once again Come and accept me as I am And with your spirit fire the cold to wash away all that is old Father, renew me once again Come and accept me as I am Down on my knees before your throne I give it all to you For you've given all to me Lord, a heart that's true to you. You will be done and die, won't turn away. My soul is lost in sorrow. Forgive me now, I pray. Give me, my Lord, a heart that's true to you. Father, renew me once again. Come and accept me as I am And with your spirit fire the gold To wash away all that is old Father, renew me once again Come and 
and accept me as I am Down on my knees before your throne I give it all to you, for you've given all to me Me, for you've given it all to me For you've given it all whole life was a mess. Drug addiction and alcoholism. I had so many physical problems and of course the depression just, just got worse. Really destroyed. I felt so desperate, so helpless. My name is Chance and this is my story. I had relationship problems. I had um, pretty much everything you can imagine. I had depression, suicidal thoughts. I also had a, you know, a relationship that lasted uh, 10 years and I thought I was going to get married. And then I got a call one day from my boyfriend stating that, oh, I'm not coming home. So, of course, that made the depression even worse. It's just when you think it couldn't get any worse, it gets worse. I had a migraine headache, and this one was so, so bad. I mean, it was pounding. So when I met my husband, it got worse. He wasn't my husband yet. He was a boyfriend. Then I said, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? In the end, I ended up doing witchcraft. What happened then was um, it got so bad that I became so suicidal that one night I, I almost you know, took my life. I wanted to take a bunch of pills because at that point I was taking so much medication. And that was the night I was gonna commit suicide. You know, it was, a, it was a flyer. It was more than that, it was like a pamphlet and it had all these testimonies. But the, the cool thing was that I was looking at it and I'm like, wow, this is heavy duty. So I made up my mind, I said, I'm gonna do this thing. I'm gonna go, one last thing I'm gonna try. Gosh, I felt so good the day that I was stopped suffering from all of this. It was, it was like a whole new life, a whole new chapter for me. My husband overcame that addiction. We got married a year later and we're still married. We're going to be married 13 years next month. My advice is, you know, anything that you want out of life, you have to work for it. It's not an easy fix. You know, me, change, completely leave the past behind, all those illnesses, all the sicknesses, all the hurts, the frustration, you know, the disappointments, all that's gone. God knows what's going on, and, and He knew that once I came that I would give my 100%, you know, I would give my all. I was very rebellious. I suffered uh, abuse, having boyfriends, um, stealing. My life before I came to the Universal Church, was very hard, very depressing. I saw my mom the morning, and then she's like, you're not gonna see me for a long time. And my life changed drastically. I suffered abuse from uh, some of my family members, especially, you know, sexual abuse. I was very rebellious, staying out late, having boyfriends, stealing. I was 16, so it was funny. I was at work, and um, my mom just walked into the store where I worked. I was so happy because she never told me that she was going to come back for us. The moment had finally came for us to reunite. However, my happiness was short-lived um, because my parents eventually decided that after 25 plus years that they, you know, no longer wanted to be a family again. Uh, at one point, I started hanging out with someone. I met him maybe at a party. Um, I did not know that he was a drug dealer. You know, we went to the clubs one night, was having a good time. He got into an altercation with someone and on our way home, that person followed us and opened fire in our car. And I got shot in my arm, my right arm. And as I was walking aimlessly, I had no destination. You know, I just walked past the church. A pastor was outside, you know, he spoke with me. You know, invited me to an event they were having that Friday night. It was a Friday. I was so desperate, 
so, so desperate. And, you know, I went. And here I was a couple of seconds before thinking about taking my own life. It's as if, like, God just sent him right there at that moment to save me. I could see my life gradually changing from every time I would, you know, attend the church. The relationship with my mom, my dad, um, I actually started, forgave them for leaving me behind. I started valuing myself more. I started not really having the urge to have more than one boyfriend. Um, right now, in this present moment, I feel great. I feel free. I feel revived. My life will only get better. I'm happy. Like, I'm so happy. I feel free. And I have the love of God. Everyone who does not submit to God's word brings to themselves destruction to their life. Even though they have faith, goals, and dreams, if there is no obedience to God's word, they will certainly be rejected by God. God sees the heart and recognizes those who fear him and keep their word. And these are the ones who want eternal life, are humbling themselves, repents from their wicked ways, and seek the throne of grace and mercy of God. The Universal Church, empowering lives with the Word of God. Because of um, family problems that I had growing up as a child, I didn't get along with my mum. Um, we used to argue a lot, and through this, um, I was felt very isolated. I started running away from home at a very young age, raving at the age of 12 years old, just doing things like, you know, being disobedient to my parents, didn't want to listen to nobody. And through this, I got involved with the wrong crowd. I was drinking alcohol nearly every day, stealing it as well from my mum. This developed into me just rebelling. And then through that, um, I had many children. Um, I had 13 children in, in total. I started smoking crack cocaine at the age of 18, 19. Um, I didn't care about myself. I didn't care about my family, my children. Through the addiction, I, um, I lost my house. I lost my children. My children was um, removed from my care. Some of them got adopted. Four of them got adopted, was taken away from me. I started attending the church. Um, I got myself engaged in a chain of prayer. Um, I was coming on a Wednesday, Friday, and on a Sunday. Um, but I wasn't really able to break free from this. At the time, I remember there was a campaign of Israel that came up. So I took part in that because 25 years of addiction, I, I had enough. And I saw the testimonies, everyone's testimonies. So I said, you know, this is for me. And today, <laughs> I'm free, I'm happy. I no longer have that desire to smoke, to drink, to prostitute myself. And I, I have a relationship with my children now. My son is in the church today as well. And I'm very happy. The 
The kingdom of God.